physics lesson. This is on Hooke's Law. So we're going to look at, at springs. Um, the learning targets for this unit are that you um, can use the equation. You understand and can use F spring equals the negative KX equation to um, solve for the force in the spring, the spring constant, and the amount of displacement of the spring. And you'll be able to determine the spring constant off of a force displacement graph. So a spring seal works. Um, it has a spring in the middle of it. So right here in the middle, it's going to have this. And that spring is going to want to stretch um, only so much based on this spring constant we'll deal with. So we have a force of a spring. This is going to be this. this um, it's a returning force. It wants to come back to where it started. And the, the, unit, the unit for that, since it's a force, is going to be newtons. The spring constant relates the force to the amount of displacement that actually occurs. And the displacement is going to be the distance away from the origin. Since the spring is going to stretch, something to note, um, using this equation right here, since springs are going to stretch, we're going to use a negative value for the displacement because it wants to come back the other way. So it's kind of going in a reverse displacement, a reverse direction, as you can see right here. Okay, so spring's got a constant. Um, so to, it wants to maintain its shape, stay in equilibrium in that non-stretch position, so that beginning part. The amount of force required is determined by that, that K value. The spring constant K is determined by the what, what's made out of, what kind of metal or what kind of rubber or whatever it's made out of, its thickness, elasticity, um, just the material and, and a little bit more. Elasticity, when you hear that term, that's due, due to resistance of changing its shape. So more elastic actually would be something solid than than something that would be like gaseous, which would change its shape very easy. The higher the spring constant, the more elasticity, so the more resistance to change. So take a look right here. This one holds a one kilogram mass, which would be 10 newtons down. It doesn't move as much as the one over here does. So this is going to have a lower spring constant. The higher the spring constant, the less it moves, uh, less when, when the, the same force is applied here. So here's a question. Which would take more force to displace a spring with a a spring with a spring constant of 30 newtons per meter or one with a spring constant of 60 newton meters? And the answer is going to be 60 newton meters because the higher the value, the more elastic or resistance to change there is. Second question, how much force is required to stretch a string by 0.5 meters that has a spring constant of 50 newton meters? And so we're going to go ahead and take our givens. We're asked for the spring constant or the force in the spring. We're given the displacement of five meters, but it's going to want to return five meters, so negative. Uh, it's going to have a spring constant value of 50 newton meters. So we go take it to that equation and we plug in our values and we're going to get a force in the spring of so a resistant force that wants to return, a returning force of 25 newtons. How much would a spring stretch that has a spring constant of 120 newton meters when pulled with a 60 newton newton force? So with the information we're given, we're asked for the how much would it stretch given the 120 newton meters, um, given a force that the spring's going to have, and so we can just plug that in, rearrange it a little bit. So we arrange this. Um, we're trying to get x alone, so we're going to take the negative k. K and divide it off of both sides. And so X equals the force of the spring. That's how we derive this equation or rearrange this equation. And we just plug in our values. So we have a 60 Newton force and we have the 120 Newton um, spring constant. And so we get an overall value of negative 0.5 meters or it's the, you're, you pulled it 0.5 meters backwards. So that the displacement is 0.5 meters away from where it wants to be. If you take a look, this is a force versus displacement graph. And so the more, the higher up on this, this side we go, the more force is being applied or the further away. And, and then the further away, it's gonna, if you take a look at the x-axis, it's gonna be displaced. And if you take a look, the, um, the slope is the amount of Newtons, the amount of Newtons that change per, per uh, slope is rise over run. In this case, Newtons that change per meter. And you should recognize that is the unit for Newton over meters. That's a unit for spring constant. So if you take a look at the slope, the slope right here, the greater the slope, the higher the spring constant you would have. So what's the spring constant represented by the graph here? Um, and just we take two points. Let's just take that point and, and 
we'll take this value and we'll take these values. So we stretched it 30 newtons when, and, and, it, and it's displaced with 30 newtons of force, it's displaced 0.3 meters. So we can use that. We can go ahead and we can just straight up solve for, solve for the, um, the slope, but we're kind of doing that by picking out our values, taking that 30 um, newtons, taking that 0.3 meters that's been displaced, but once again, it's going to be away from the origin, so we'll go with a negative value and solving for k. So k equals the negative force in the spring over x. We get the negative over negative 0.3, and we get a value of 100 newton meters as our as our k here, as our as our our spring constant. How much mass would be required to stretch the spring 0.9 meters? So you could try to just continue this on until 0.9 meters, but it's going to go off the page. So we can just go ahead and solve for it. We can take our k that we found the last in the last slide. We're going to solve for the force in the spring. And we're given a displacement when that spring constant of 100 newton meters uh, is in the spring. We get what force is going to displace it by negative. Once again, it's going to, it's going to want to go back. So it's a negative 0.9 because we're going to go away from where it wants to be. So we take the spring equation and we just plug in our values and we get, this, we need a, a force in the spring of 90 newtons. So what we need to do is we need to figure out, well, what kind of weight would create a force of 90 newtons and weight is mass times gravity. So we're going to go ahead and set the force, the spring force in equal to mass times gravity. And rearrange that for mass and so the 90 newtons over the 10 uh, g which is acceleration due to gravity on earth and this gives you a mass of nine kilograms so if we had a mass of nine kilograms that was tied to the spring it would displace by a value once again we're just looking at the spring itself the spring itself would displace by 0 0.9 meters away from where it wants to be and so it would want to go backwards it's negative 0 0.9 meters how much is a spring constant in a spring that requires 100 newton, 150 newtons of force to displace it 0 0.03 meters from the origin? So just plug in our values, get our values or givens. We have the force in the spring of 150 newtons. We have a displacement of 0 0.03 meters away from the origin, so we're going to make it negative, solving for k. So when we rearrange that, when we plug that in, we rearrange the, um, the spring constant equation to get to this. I didn't put it on the slide, um, but we can just plug in our values. And when we plug in our values, we're going to get a, a spring constant of 5,000 Newton meters. Okay, and then there's a problem set that, that may or may not may may or may not be included in today's activities. Um, I know I have it on my handout, uh, but let's just take a look at that and continue. Once again, when you're doing the problem set, you need to make sure that you are doing the work and coming back and just checking, not not taking the answers. That was something where you might have been doing it during the lesson, but I want you to make I want to make sure that you are actually getting it and understanding it. So which a which spring A or B in the graph right to the right would have the high spring constant? You're looking at the slope. The higher the slope, the higher the spring constant, the higher the newtons per meter of spring constant. And so B is going to have a greater displacement or a greater a greater spring constant because it's a greater force versus displacement. What were the spring constant in AB? So we can take values off of this. We can take the 25, we can take the 0.6, and we can go ahead and solve for that. And when we solve for it, plugging in our values, we're going to get a spring constant of 41.67 newton meters. How much force is required to stretch a string by 0.2 meters that has a spring constant of 820 newtons? Well, pull out our values, spring constant of 820 newton meters. Or that should be newton meters, and we're, we're solving for the force in the spring. We have our displacement, once again, negative, because it's going to be displaced away from where it wants to go. And we can plug in our values. We plug in our values into the spring constant equation. The Hooke's Law just does that. Um, we go ahead and get a neg uh, 164 newtons of, of force. So it's going to want to, it's, it's, it's going to, if there, you need to put 164 newtons, a mass of 100, that would equ equate to 164 newtons if you're hanging the, the mass below the spring. How much would the spring stretch that has a spring constant of 240 newton meters when pulled with 160 newtons of force? So how much would it stretch is the displacement um, given that spring constant, given the force that we're putting into the spring. And so we can go to the spring constant equation. We can rearrange it for x, plug in our values, and we will get an answer of, so the displacement is going to be negative 0.67 meters, or in other words, it's going to stretch 
0.767 meters backwards from the equilibrium position.